All the different types of proteins found inside our body are built from a collection of 20 different types of amino acids. And all of these types of amino acids are known as alpha amino acids. So let's begin by discussing what an alpha amino acid is. Why do we call an amino acid an alpha amino acid? Well, let's recall some basic organic chemistry. So we know from organic chemistry that if we have a carbonyl group, so a carbon-oxygen double bond, and we have another carbon attached to this carbonyl group like so, then this carbon here is known as an alpha carbon. And for example, if we have a hydrogen atom attached to the alpha carbon, this H atom is known as an alpha hydrogen atom. Now, what is an alpha amino acid? Well, an alpha amino acid contains a center carbon that is an alpha carbon. And to see what we mean by that, let's take a look at the following diagram, which is basically the general structure of an alpha amino acid. And let's compare it to this diagram we've drawn right here. So let's suppose that the other group attached to this carbon is an oxygen group. So what that means is this entire group here is a carboxylic acid group in which this oxygen has been deprotonated. So we have a negative charge here. So what an alpha amino acid is, it's, it's basically a molecule that contains a center carbon that is an alpha carbon. And so it contains this carboxylic acid group that has been deprotonated as shown in the following diagram. And not only that, the other group attached to this center alpha carbon is an amino group that has been protonated. Now we'll see why this is protonated and why this is deprotonated in just a moment. So we have this other amino group as shown in the diagram. So let's draw it in the protonated form with the positive charge. And we have one of the other groups is an H atom as shown here. So that's the alpha H atom. And the final group is a side chain group we also call the R group. Now, the reason we call it an R group is because the R group actually differs from one amino acid to another. And we'll discuss exactly what that means in just a moment. So this is what an alpha amino acid is. It contains the center carbon that is an alpha carbon that is, it is attached to this carbon of this carbonyl group as shown in the following diagram. Now, alpha amino acids usually contain a chiral carbon, and the only exception is glycine, because in glycine, this R group is a simple H atom. So let's remember what chiral groups are. A chiral carbon is a carbon that contains four different groups attached to that carbon. So in this particular case, <clears throat> one of these groups is the carboxylic acid, the other group is the amino group, the third group is the H atom, and the final group is the side chain, the R group, that is unique to that particular amino acid. So 19 out of the 20 amino acids are chiral because this R group is not the same as these other three groups. But for glycine, as we'll see in Lex lecture, this R group is actually an H atom, so glycine is not chiral. Now, 18 out of the 19 chiral amino acids, they exist in their S absolute configuration form, and only 16 exists in the R absolute configuration form. Now, what do we mean by absolute configuration? Well, let's remember a little bit of organic chemistry. So, in organic chemistry, in order to determine the absolute uh, configuration, we basically have to term, we have to prioritize the different types of atoms attached to this carbon. So we have the center chiral carbon and we basically give these four groups a value that ranges between one and four. Now one is that group, that atom, that contains the highest atomic number. So notice that this carbon is attached to a nitrogen, it attached to a carbon, to an H atom, and to the R group. And usually, this is given a four, or actually always, 
this is given a 4, this is always given a 1, and usually this is given a 2, and this is given a 3. So this is given a 1 because the nitrogen has a higher atomic number than the carbon, and this R group, which is usually carbon. Now this is given the highest, the 4, because it has the lowest atomic number. And usually this is a carbon, this is a carbon, and then the next atom is a carbon, here it's an oxygen. So this is a 2 and this is a 3. And so we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, to determine whether it's the R or the S absolute configuration, we basically have to take this molecule oriented in such a way so that the fourth group, H, points into the board so that we can't actually see it. So after we orient it like so, we get this H group points into the board and these three groups will point out as shown in the following diagram. So we basically rotate it slightly so that these two are coming out of the board, this is coming out of the board, and this group will point into the board. And so now we have one, two, and three, and we basically have to follow this order, one, two, three, and we draw our arrow and notice the arrow points in the counterclockwise direction. And that means it's the S. If it pointed in the clockwise direction, that would mean it was, it would be an R absolute configuration. So the majority of the L isomers in our body have the S absolute configuration as shown in the following diagram. <coughs> Now, earlier I said that this is a protonated version of the amino group and this is the deprotonated version of the carboxylic acid group. Why? Well, it turns out that the pH of the solution in which that amino acid is in determines whether or not these are protonated or deprotonated. And it turns out that at a neutral pH of around 7, our amino acids exist predominantly in their dipolar form. And the dipolar form is also known as the Zwitter ion form. Now, what do we mean by the Zwitter ion form? So, in the Zwitter ion form, this amino group is protonated, it has a full positive charge, and this carboxylic acid group is deprotonated, it has a full negative charge. And so we have a dipolar species. Dipolar simply means we have two dipole moments. So we can basically redraw this diagram in the following way, where this carbon is this center carbon, this orange group is this H atom, this green group is the R atom, this carboxylic acid group contains a negative charge, this amino group contains a positive charge, and so because we have these two separate and opposite charges, this is the dipolar form of the amino acid, the Zwitter ion form. And because the majority of the cells and the solutions inside our body have a pH of around 4, the majority of the amino acids exist in this Zwitter ion form. Now, the next question is, what exactly happens to our amino acid, to the Zwitter ion, if we decrease the pH, make it more acidic, or increase the pH, make it more basic? Well, it turns out in very acidic solutions, if the pH of our solution is, let's say, 1, then because we have so many H ions in our solution, this here will be protonated. And so our amino acid will exist in the following form. It will have an overall charge of positive 1. This is called the positively charged amino acid species. So at a pH, at a very acidic pH of around 1, this amino acid and in general amino acids exist in their positively charged species form. Now, as we begin to increase our pH, we decrease the concentration of the H plus ions inside our solution, and at around two, this H found on the carboxylic acid group begins to dissociate, it deprotonates, it loses that H atom, and so it gains that full negative charge. So we see that if we continue going higher at a pH of around 4, 5, 6, and 7, 
our amino acid exists in its zwitter ion form. That means we have a positive charge here, we have a negative charge here. Now, as we continue driving the pH up, as we continue decreasing the amount of H plus ions in our solution, eventually we get to the point where we have so little H plus ions in solution that this H found on a nitrogen is going to deprotonate, it will dissociate, as to increase the amount of H plus ions in solution. And at around a pH of nine, that is exactly where that begins to happen. So at a pH of nine, this is deprotonated. And notice that now this has a neutral charge, this has a negative charge. And so what that means, this entire amino acid will be negatively charged as a result of this fact. And so this is a positively charged amino acid and that is found in a very low pH, in a pH of around one. Now in the middle, we have this zwitter ion form and at this end, when we are above a pH of nine, when it's very basic, we have a negatively charged species as shown in the following diagram. Now, the final thing that I'd like to mention about amino acids is, so amino acids essentially are the same on this group, on this group, and on this group. Now, where we can differentiate one amino acid from another is by the R group, by that side chain. So we have different types of side chains, and these different, si uh, uh, these different types of side chains basically determine the type of amino acid that we are the discussing. Now, these side chains can basically differ based on their size, based on their shape, based on their structure. They can differ based on the amount of charge found on that side chain, based on the polarity, based on the hydrophobic character, as well as on their ability to create hydrogen bonds. And so these differences, these different properties of these side chain groups basically determine the properties and the chemical reactivities of our amino acids. And in the next several lectures, we're going to focus on these different types of amino acids and their different types of side chains that are found on those amino acids.